my name is Sophie, and today I'm going to be discussing aquatic invertebrates, like its crixates on the screen right now, and how they can be used as measures of site biodiversity or as bio- biological indicators or bioindicators of water quality, more specifically at the Leicestershire Wildlife Trust site at Rutland. But first, what is a bioindicator? Suzo et al. 2014 defines a bioindicator species as a species that, when present or permanent, uh, can show the quality of an ecosystem. Aquatic invertebrates can do this in freshwater habitats. Uh, for example, the Carixidae or water boatmen, or the larvae of all these species on the screen now can show uh, good water quality. But why is this important to know? Freshwater ecosystems are not doing so good. I mean, just look at all the stats on the side here. A lot of things are in decline, or things are just not up to ecological status, which isn't good. Uh, it can be due to many reasons, but uh, invasive non-native species is considered one of the worst. At Rutland, there's also a big problem with sewage. Uh, in 2021 alone, uh, the, the sewage overflow uh, went into Rutland 54 times for a total of 385 hours, which obviously has effects to the environment, which is why bioindicated species are important to be monitored, as it allows for a quick response time to any potential threats that may occur. There are a few ways to measure the quality of fresh water using aquatic invertebrates, including all of these methods. At Rutland, a modified version of the BMWP score is used, as there's nothing currently standard for such large bodies of fresh water. Uh, Corixidae will score 5 on that scale, meaning they are of average quality. So in this study, we're going to be using uh, diversity indexes to, in order to determine where is most diverse. Uh, but what else is there to know about the Corixidae? First off, they were classified by Leach in 1815. They are in all of these taxonomic groups. Uh, there's over 100 species of aquatic or semi-aquatic hemiptera in the UK, 37 of which are Corixidae and 12 being identified at Rutland. They have piercing sucking mouth parts, much like the rest of hemiptera, uh, and some species only eat uh, plant sound key. Uh, their front legs have scoop shaped tarsi to help hook onto plants uh, in order to stay underwater, whereas their back legs are, have hairs and are all shaped to help with swimming. Unlike their relatives, the back swimmers, Corixidae swim right side up instead of uh, upside down. We know that Corixidae score a BMWP score of 5, so why choose them for the study? Well, it's been proposed that some Corixidae species can survive in higher or lower uh, acidity and or the amount of chloride and potassium in the water, so this might be useful for detecting changes in the environment like eutrophication. Now it's time for fun facts about the Rutland site. It's a man-made reservoir built in the 1970s in the smallest county in Britain. When being created, uh, a nature reserve was put into the design work, and that nature reserve can be found on the west end side of the reservoir. It covers 393 hectares, 8 lagoons and 23 smaller ponds, as well as uh, so many other important uh, habitats. If you were to walk around the whole thing, including the peninsula, that would be 24 miles, and it, at full capacity it can carry 124 million cubic metres of water. Uh, that means, because of its vast size, Scandinavian birds that are migrating often see it and land at Rutland, making it an SPA, a Ramsar site, and a triple SI. There's also been a lot of uh, reintroduction projects at Rutland, including osprey and water bowls. Uh, there's a healthy population of otters there, and also over 250 aquatic invertebrate species found at Rutland. Uh, because of this, the water quality must be good uh, to help support all of these important animals. In this study, Lagoons 3, 5 and the Marine Reservoir were sampled for Corixidae. If we take a look at this map of Rutland, uh, the arrows signify movement of water and you can see where the water treatment plant is and where the Marine Reservoir pump is. Uh, if we have a look at uh, Lagoon 3 first, it receives its water mainly from the water treatment plant, which means even though it's meant to be of good quality, it often receives uh, discharges from the water treatment plant of sewage, uh, making it more polluted. Uh, Lagoon 5 was created along with Lagoon 6, 7 and 8. It mainly receives water from rainfall and the main reserve, but can experience agricultural runoff. The main reservoir receives its water from the River Neen and the River Welland. Uh, these sample sites were chosen as both uh, sewage and agricultural runoff have been shown to have adverse effects on the environment. The method to collect recruits today is as follows. Three sets of samples are taken per location with around 20 sample locations per lagoon or reservoir, uh, making sure to include all the major habitat types such as rebed, emergent vegetation or open water. Uh, you also have to remember to clean equipment between a reservoir or lagoon to prevent the spread of disease or invasive non-native species. Each sample is taken by using a standard pond net and sweeping for three minutes within the water like my good friend Curtis is doing here. 
the contents is then placed into a white tray for so you can see everything uh, and with some of the lagoon or reservoir water in it and it can look like what's in this video now with this little cool newt in it and now normally Rutland would just uh, identify down to family level but in this case we were looking specifically for the Corixidae and in one minute you pick out all of the Corixidae and place them into a sample jar of glycerol in order to preserve them for further identification in the lab. Corixidae, much like many other insects, have to be identified using a microscope. But first off, as they're in a jar of glycerol, like in this image here, uh, they have to be washed up in water. Then using Savage's key, they are split apart into males and females, as the males are way easier to identify. From there, to ID the males, you have to then find their genitals, which can end up with bug parts everywhere, like in this image. But once you eventually locate them, it should look like this under the microscope, uh, and which this can be used to identify them down to species level. Uh, but now onto the good stuff, the results. Both of these bar charts were made in our studio by your surely, and it can be seen that Lagoon 3 has way less uh, correct today in it than the main reservoir or Lagoon 5, as well as Lagoon 3 only having three species present. Uh, the main reservoir, on the other hand, has six species present, and Lagoon 5 has seven species present. Uh, Punctata is only found in Lagoon 5, whereas Fulani is the most uh, common species across the board. When it comes to the diversity indexes, let's first start off with the Shannon's index. Now, uh, a large value H means there's a greater uncertainty of what species you'll pick if you randomly select an organism from a community. So a large value of H means there's a greater diversity. If we look above, the greatest value can be seen in Lagoon 5. So Lagoon 5 is the most diverse, whereas Lagoon 3 has the smallest value, making it the least diverse out of the three. And next up, the Simpsons index. A value of zero means infinite diversity, whereas a value of one means no diversity. So you're aiming for a low value for more diversity. So if we look above, Lagoon 5 has the smallest value, making it once again the most diverse, whereas Lagoon 3 has the greatest value, making it the least diverse. And with these, th these two, the main reservoir has been in between. And then with the Burger Parker index, if you have a greater value of D, it means that the community is dominated more by the most uh, common species. So above, Lagoon 3 has uh, the greatest value, meaning it's probably least diverse as uh, it's more dominated by the most common species, which in this case is the Fulani, uh, than the other two are because they both also have Fulani in there, but it's just not as dominating. Uh, finally, the evenness score. Uh, J values uh, range from 0 to 1, with 1 meaning a higher level of evenness, and lower values meaning uh, that there's one or few species dominating the community. So if we look above, they've all got quite similar values, but they're all quite high. So that means they've probably got all uh, really high evenness, but of similar qualities. I know the question that's burning in everyone's minds is, what does all of this mean? Well, Lagoon 3 is the worst in terms of diversity for Corixidae and also has reduced numbers of Corixidae in comparison to Lagoon 5 and the main reservoir. This is most likely due to the amount of sewage that Lagoon 3 receives from the water treatment plant, which increases the amount of phosphorus and nitrogen in the water as, long, as well as many other chemicals. Uh, as Fulani, Prosuta and Wallastoni are found in Lagoon 3, uh, they are probably the more tolerant species of sewage than the rest of the species that were identified. Tully Town in 1991 found that Prosuta was associated with high potassium levels, which helped support this idea that Lagoon 3 is the most polluted but also that the main reservoir may have high pollution, uh, potassium levels, as Prosuta is the third most common species there. Uh, Lagoon 5, uh, we said at the start, had uh, agricultural runoff, but it may not be uh, subject to that much, as there wasn't a reduction in numbers, nor a large population of Prosuta, which you would think would occur because of the amount of phosphorus and nitrogen that are often found in agricultural products. Toyota also found that the distinctive species was closely related with high diversity, which none of the sites had, had the species in much quantity. Uh, in addition to the fact that the overall quality of uh, Rutland, like the ecological status, is moderate, it probably means that the whole site needs to be improved more than it already is. Uh, finally, if we want to continue further, more curricular day studies should be done alongside uh, like taking a water quality test. If it's done every year, then you'll get a grasp of how much uh, the Corixidae species change depending on the amount of uh, like phosphorus or nitrogen in the water. Thanks for watching. You can find all the references on the screen right now if you're interested. Be sure to check out the Rutland website or even visit or even volunteer to help out with projects such as this one. Uh, goodbye!